Will it be seven in 2017? Welcome to Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland. Ohio University men's basketball is trying to capture the program's seventh Mid-American Conference tournament title. I'm Russ Eisenstein. Rob Cornelius joins me back here again, and Ohio's the number two seed. This has been a heck of a year to keep it together, and Ohio is three wins away from the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and it's what's funny, you're a two seed. You've lost the MVP, the best player in this league, early in this conference season. We pieced it together, took some losses early on, right the ship and you're back here as a two with frankly one of the hardest draws you can imagine going into this weekend. Ohio has 19 wins on the year and the quarterfinal matchup is against 17 win Toledo. The Rockets did win in their rivalry game of the first round the other night over Bowling Green. We'll talk about Toledo coming up. Jerron Simmons a first teamer in this league. We talked to him prior to the team's practice here at the arena. Very focused. Says he doesn't have to be like a DJ Cooper, like an Armand Bassett, like an, a Walt Offit from an individual standpoint. He says all his guys around him are going to help him and them win a title. Yeah, and as long as he stays on the floor, with the exception of games where he's had foul trouble, if he can go and give you that 36 minutes, three days in a row, good things certainly can happen. Yeah, the conventional logic is you have to shoot well to be able to win this tournament. That was how Ohio did get it done previously. And I wonder if that's going to have to be how it gets done here over the course of three days. Well, obviously, Ohio is based on make, taking and making a bunch of threes and being highly fish on offense. But that I've been watching the last few weeks, and a big part of that's been Jason Carter's how good is Ohio from two. When you're taking volume shots from two, are you over 55 60% that area? That usually means Ohio wins, period. Jerron got my vote for player of the year in the league. Didn't win that. Jason Carter got my vote for freshman of the year. Didn't win that. Saul Phillips got my vote for coach of the year. Didn't win that. All right. But there were some representatives on the first team. We, we know it was Jerron, and then on the second team and third team, and certainly on the all-freshman team, too. But I would imagine, even if they're not saying it, there's got to be a little chip on the shoulder there. Should be, and they haven't asked me to vote, frankly, in those since the late 90s, and I don't really blame them. But big picture, Jerron deserved more than a sniff of player of the year. Carter, his minutes, his stats were put up in higher leverage time than frankly the best player at Miami. So I think that's why you look at him in these key situations. But big picture, individual awards, I and mean, that stuff doesn't really matter. It's what you do the rest of this week in Cleveland. Yeah, can they keep it together? It's a short rotation. They say their legs are all right and they're ready to go. Now to the opposition. It's the Rockets. They're playing pretty well down the stretch. They were able to really distance themselves in the second half from Bowling Green in round number one. Meeting number one, and the only one of the year, was a Toledo win. 79-76 at the Convocation Center, and they were able to do it inside and outside. Steve Taylor, John John Williams. Yeah, and Taylor's been the guy. Beefy matchup inside, what Ohio does with him, how they front the post, how they keep the ball out of his hands. But he gets a lot of times the possessions back himself. Third leading rebounder in the country, a lot of offensive stickbacks. He is a big-time transfer, big-time player in the post for Toledo. Yeah, and John John was certainly starting to heat it up. He's an inside-outside threat, but he's really uh, a type of player that is able to turn the corner, get some shots up, and he could score in bunches. And you look at it, too. Williams, the guy that's a high volume shooter guys on the floor a ton but Toledo's actually gotten better from three since we saw them Jalen Sanford Nate Navigato percentages up over 40 plus percent more than one guy unlike that Miami team more than one guy you have to truly guard at 21 feet and it is a tough side of the bracket to be sure for the Bobcats because you see some teams here that beat you in the regular season of course Buffalo is Buffalo and Ohio struggled with them in the second meeting and of course uh, they were able to knock the Bobcats out last year in the semifinal round at the Q. Kent State's looming. Toledo beat you. Not a real good side. Not a real favorable draw. Yeah, don't get ahead of yourselves, but the computers really, really like Toledo and Buffalo and Akron and Ohio, but having to play potentially all three of them in three days makes this run even harder. So at the Q, 2005, 2010, 2012, 2017, it would certainly be special if this crew could get it done. Every five-year rotation, sort of, but we'll take it. All right, it is Ohio, it is Toledo. In the first game of the night session on Thursday night at the Q, we'll broadcast on the Ohio IMG Sports Network. Network pregame begins at 6, and of course, you need to be infotained by Rob Cornelius and myself, and the tip comes at 6.30. Should be a lot of fun. Hopefully the Cats can get it done. Number seven, tournament title in the MAC in 2017 perhaps. It's the Bobcats and the Rockets in Game 1 of the MAC Tournament. For Jason Chapino and for Rob C., I'm Russ Eisenstein. Our coverage from the Q continues here on Bobcat TV.